So now we're going to talk about velocity. And these typically are, are like more mathy questions, but I think they're a little bit easier because um, they're pretty straightforward. And I feel like you don't have to wrap your brain around them as much as you do the other questions, like the frame of reference and the displacement. Um, so for this one, um, we've got a truck traveling at 36 meters per second. So I'm going to call that my velocity. And, um, and it's going west. So because it's a velocity, I need to make sure I've got my direction. Another thing you could also do is let's say you were doing never e sour. Let's say you decided that east was the positive direction and west was the negative direction. You could say also negative 36 meters per second. So um, a sign, like a plus or a minus, is also considered a direction when we're talking about velocity. So velocity has to have a direction, but it can be never, you know, north, east, south, or west, but it can also be plus or minus if that's what you've decided. Okay. Um, but like if you're doing a test, you know, you can't write on your test like, well, I've decided that um, west is negative. You know, you would want to put west if that's what they say. But but let's say they had negative 36 on here. That, that's also velocity. Um, and then we've got a distance of 5.2 kilometers. And then we have a time and that's what we want. Now, um, because our velocity is in meters, we have to convert this kilometers to meters. And I know you can do this in your head, um, but I tend to make mistakes if I don't do it in my head. You know, so like a recurring theme, I make mistakes when I don't write stuff down. Um, so this is, um, I just always write it out. Now, um, you know, our velocity formula is V equals D over T. And I did not learn this till I was a teacher, but um, you can actually put this into a triangle. If someone's taught you this before, um, you probably know what I'm talking about, but you can actually put it into a triangle and get, you know, V equals D over T. Do you see that? This could be like the equals. Um, and then um, if we want to solve for time, I'll just kind of cross out time like this. And that means time is equal to D over V. Crazy, right? I especially like it because like I said, I don't like math. And so I especially don't like algebra. So that um, means I don't have to do the algebra part. So then I can do um, 5,200 divided by 36 meters. And for this one, I'll, I'll put the units in just so you guys can see kind of how they cross out. And then when I put it in my calculator, I got 144.4 seconds. Okay. Pretty cool, right? You don't have to do any algebra or rearranging or any of that stuff. Um, so I feel like that's a little more simple, a little more straightforward. Um, the big thing is, is make sure if they give you units that aren't, that don't match, you make sure they match. Um, you could have also calculate, you know, changed your meters per second to kilometers per second, but I think it's easier to just switch the kilometers personally. Um, so that's the velocity problem. So now we're gonna go through acceleration. And for acceleration, we have several formulas and I've saved them here. And you guys get your formula sheets, by the way, on your test and your quizzes and anything that's graded, you can use the formula sheet. Um, it's on the front page of your course. It's on the resources page and it's on all the study guides. Because I really want to make sure you use it. You do not have to memorize these problems, these formulas. You don't get like extra credit or like, you know, special like hardness points for doing the course without the formula sheet. Okay. You don't you don't get anything extra for doing it without the formula sheet. So you might as well use it. Okay. And so for this one, um, we've got our train accelerating at 21.5 meters per second squared. Okay, and you can tell that it's an acceleration because it's got this squared right here. Um, all accelerations will have a squared there. Um, and then it's going from 13.2 meters per second to 38.9. So our initial velocity is 13.2, and our final velocity is equal to 38. Point nine meters per second. And you may have also seen um, in your course, you may have seen like V0 instead of VI. They're literally the exact same thing. Okay. 
It's just some people use the zeros for the initial and some people use the I for the initial. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. And for this one, we want a time. Now, to solve these acceleration problems, we need to look for a formula that's going to have a time in it because that's what we need. But we also want it to have just these three variables because if it has like, for example, a distance, we're, I hate to use this term, but we're screwed, right? Because then we're, then we need time and then we also need distance, right? And, and you can only solve a problem if you have one, right? You only need one, you can only have one missing on a math problem, right? An algebra problem. So when I see this, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cross out anything that has distance in it. And luckily that leaves me with one left. Um, but, you know, let's say it was time, you know, it would cross out the two with time and go from there. Um, and so that's kind of how I narrow down which formula I need. Um, Cause I get that question a lot. Like, you know, I know I'm supposed to use my acceleration formulas, but how do I know which one? And you just have to narrow it down um, based on, you know, what you've been given. Okay, so now I'm going to put my numbers in here. Okay, and so, um, you know, we've, we've done, you guys have done algebra before. So, um, you know that this one has a letter attached to it. So you can't, you know, you can't minus that one by the other side, right? Um, that's like an algebra rule. Um, uh, but I see that mistake sometimes. Okay, so now we've got this, and then we can divide both sides by 21.5. And that'll get that T all by itself like we want. So then we'll have T is equal to like 1.2 seconds. Okay, do you guys see how I did that? Um, how I kind of like cross out the formula. We're going to do one more. Um, and it's an acceleration problem. And we're going to use the acceleration formulas. But they call it a free fall problem. And I'll show you why. OK, so this one is um, a free fall problem. And um, sometimes students will freak out because this says, if a ball is dropped, how long does it take to fall 60 meters, right? So you know, people go, well, I got 60 meters, but there's no other numbers in this problem. How the heck am I supposed to solve this, right? Um, and so there's a couple things that we know here that they expect you to know, OK? Uh, because we're dropping the ball, it's falling with gravity. So that means our acceleration is going to be gravity, which is 9.8. And then we still need like a velocity, right, or something. Um, cause none of these problems, you know, all of these problems have velocity. So we've got to have at least one. Um, and so if the ball is being dropped, you know, they're just like hanging it over this 60 meter cliff and then they're just letting go. Right. So the initial velocity of this ball is just zero because they're not throwing it over the cliff. They're just, you know, hanging it over the cliff and dropping it. Okay. So our initial velocity is zero. Okay, and then we want a how long. And how long is another way of saying we want the time. Okay, so in this one, we have a distance, we have an acceleration, and we have an initial velocity. Okay, and so we need to get rid of any formula that has a final velocity in it because we don't have a final velocity, and so we can't mess with that. Okay, so this one has a final, and this one has a final, and so I'm going to use this one. Okay. And so it's um, DF, DI, and I'll explain the DF and DI in a second because I know we only have one distance. Okay, and I'm just gonna erase this, this final T. Well, I was going to, but I don't wanna, okay, there we go. Um, and so your initial, your initial distance is just zero uh, because you know, you're starting at, we're going to say where we dropped it at was our initial distance, and that was zero. I see that someone's typing something. I'm going to kind of plop in my numbers while you're typing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll post the recording. Have fun. 
by. Um, and so for this one, we've got, you know, this di is zero. So we can just kind of get rid of that. And then we have zero times t. So we can get rid of that, which really makes me happy because I don't want to solve a quadratic formula, right? I, that is math that I, I do not remember. Um, so if you see one with a quadratic formula, um, check again because you probably maybe made a mistake um, because you're not really going to have to solve one like that. So now we have 60 equals 4.9. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4.9. And what did I get when I did this math? I got 12.24. Now, um, a lot of folks will stop here, right? But this isn't our time. This is our time squared. So we have to take this and we have to take the square root. Okay, when we take the square root, I think I got about 3.5. And that's our actual answer. So uh, make sure that you don't stop at the t squared and you go that one extra step because you've already done, you know, most of the work and it, it really stinks to like, you know, you're almost done and then not finish.